Wow. I'm waking up to a rainbow. That's pretty cool. Good sheep. Happy sheep. So cool. Good ram. All right. I just picked the fattest purslane stems. And I'm going to try to, for the first time, try something new. Instead of just eating the skinny and medium sized ones, you watch that water filter, buddy. Good boy. I'm going to mandolin slice them this way and make little discs out of them. Fatty like water chestnut type things, I don't know. Is that bigger? Huh? And it works. And I'm hoping this will allow the uh, butter to get into the inside and make them taste even better. They, they're just tasteless when they're this big. They're, when they're smaller, they taste a little bit like spinach. Uh, and they're tender, and these are a little tougher, so they take a lot longer to cook. So I think it'll allow for the boiling water to get in there and cook them faster. And it'll allow for the butter to get in there and make them taste even better. Yeah, when they get towards this skinniness, they're not really cutting with the mandolin very easily. I gotta get my fingers are really close to the blade to make it stiff enough. Any skinnier than this wouldn't really work. Not many leafy greens. Not very many leaves on these purslane and there wasn't any really leaves worth worth uh, collecting on the amaranth. They're all so small and few and far between are green enough. I like, didn't even continue trying those. Everything has gone to seed. Amaranth stems might be edible, but they're tough. I doubt it. I doubt they'd be a good texture. They cook very easily. All about efficiency. Things might be edible, but if they're not efficient enough to cook, and they're not palatable, and they don't taste good, then, or at least don't taste like anything like these, then they don't deserve the title of edible wild edible they're just wild survival food but nobody wants to survive anymore if anyone's in a survival situation in a post-apocalyptic situation they'll probably just kill themselves <laughs> if they don't have palatable food all right Let's see how this cooks up i got whoa dealing with Overcast sky and it's uh, been raining off and on. I'm going to fire up my stove. Got some wild onion and garlic seeds that are fermented in my sheep's way. So all we got is potatoes that I grew. Some wild onion and garlic seeds that I forage, and some purslane stems that I forged and mandolin sliced. I think these are gonna be awesome. They're already a lot more enjoyable to eat raw than taking bites out of it. Super mild. Let's see, put some rosemary in on it. Got some forged rosemary. I can grind that up a little bit. I don't gotta put it through my hand grind grinder. Just my regular hands. And a little bit of my pars wild parsley. My usual spices, that's uh, enough right there. This wild parsley is so strong still. It's over a year old. I collected it not this past summer, but the summer before last. And it still smells so fragrant, it's freaking amazing. One of the best shelf life herbs I've ever freaking picked and used. All right, transfer to this pot. I'll cook 
a lot more efficiently. Awesome. So awesome, so awesome, so awesome. Thank you, God. Ridiculous. Oh, my God. Oh, my goodness. This stove is so awesome. And these solar stoves are so awesome. I can't believe I even lived without them for so many years. Fucking crazy. Hi, buddy. Gonna start raining again. Rainy season started. Fucking having fire season is starting. This is awesome. I can still use the solar cookers in the winter, but now I got a third option. In the summertime, I only got two options. I only had one option. I got two solar cookers. Fancy. And I only got one sheep in milk right now, and she's not producing very much. Uh, I got maybe a third of a gallon a day from her. Um, but I'm drinking it all. Fucking good. And I got one of my lambs, one of my sheep, is about to lamb. And next week starting, next week, uh, maybe the week after that. Somewhere around there. And then I'll have ample milk again for cheese making and butter making. And I wonder if I can make this last, this store butter, make this last until she lambs. And it's still going to be uh, another couple of weeks after that, that um, before I'll be able to start taking a little bit of milk here and there. So I'll probably have to not buy another fucking, another block of butter. This is only three more meals left. I can't wait to have some cheese again. That's gonna be nice. I haven't had cheese for fucking a whole month. It's been a little bit over a month since last time I had cheese since I finished off my, my sheeps last wheel of cheese. I've been eating the dehydrated um, or roasted ricotta. I guess that's cheese. I still got a little bit of that left. Maybe I'll put some of that in there. I want to taste this as is. I just want to, I like simple meals. I want to taste it with the with the uh, purslane stem sections. What their texture is like. I figured that they'll have retain more texture than the potatoes and the onions will, uh, will add that texture to another layer of texture I don't need to add another third one that'll complicate things and then I won't be able to appreciate the previous two I forgot to add salt I think I have salt I just met a new subscriber in person a YouTube subscriber she brought me salt. What else she brought me? She brought me some ghee. I forgot I had ghee. She brought me this because I told her I was getting low on butter. Freaking love ghee. Some ghee. What else she bring me? Uh, she brought me a bunch of herbs and spices. Marjoram, thyme, basil. And then she brought me uh, a couple of teas too, like, yeah, a couple of teas, like alfalfa straw, an oat straw, and yeah, pretty interesting. I want to try those. Mm. The purslane has retained a little bit of its body, and the potatoes are pretty cooked down. The onions have retained their body, just like what I was hoping. Yeah. Those purslane little discs. 
They're like water chestnuts. About the same consistency. Same size, a little bit smaller. Tasteless. Once the purslane leaves start to shrink because it starts putting its energy into the seeds, you just move over to the stems uh, in this way because the stems start to get tougher when uh, the leaves start to go away also. Um, and this is a way that you can extend purslane's stem season, um, the season that the stems are uh, palatable and have a good, a good texture. You just uh, mandolin, slice them into little discs, and yeah, that extends their edible season. Good to know. Purslane uh, doesn't really have any way to efficiently enough uh, gather its seeds for edibility, and their seeds don't seem to have like starch inside of them like amaranth seeds. So its main food attributes are its leaves, which um, here this year they died off in August, the leaves started to become not worth it to, to gather because they started being smaller and smaller. And then here it is, September. I don't know what the date is. I think it's towards the end of September. And yeah, the stems have been getting really tough in the last month. And this is a, a way that hopefully I'll be able to eat the stems through the shit as long as they're in existence this is awesome good to know every little trick every little every little wild edible hack purslane hack it is done boiling yeah man Beautiful. I'm so happy you learned this.